Deputy President William Ruto was this evening forced to abandon a private trip. Early this week, media outlets in Kenya carried the reports of an alleged grounding of the Deputy President William Ruto at Wilson Airport by the head of public service Machang, who was supposed to clear his scheduled private visit to Uganda. According uh, to the DP's head of communication, David Mugonya, the DP decided to go back home after spending more than five hours trying to secure clearance from state officials in vain. To date, the Kenyan government has not issued an official response over the allegations and many are pointing fingers at Uganda as the trouble causer. The Ugandan government has, however, broken its silence over the matter. His Excellency the Ruto was prevented from coming to Uganda. That's the first part of the question, isn't it? Why? But I cannot answer that question because that, those things took place in Kenya. He was not prevented by Uganda. We have no authority, we have no powers, those are the jurisdictions of the Kenyan government. The reason why he was prevented from coming to Uganda, if it had ever happened, or stopped from coming to Uganda, if it ever happened, is something that you should channel to the Kenyan High Commissioner, who is here. At a news conference in Kampala, the state minister in charge of international relations, Okero Oriem, noted with the reprimand that Uganda will continue respecting its diplomatic principles. Our foreign policy is very clear, as clear as the skies, as clear as the water in the glass, is that we do not interfere in the internal affairs of any country whatsoever. We only participate and engage other countries if they invite us to be in their country. So we have no interest to interfere in the politics or the social affairs of Kenya. Kenya is being run by an elected president, his Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta, and is doing a good job. And there's no reason why the government of Uganda should interfere in, uh, in, his, in the administration of this government, or even how the, the director of that politics is taking place. We don't. He also confirms that Ruto's alleged trip to Uganda was a matter not addressed to his ministry. The protocol department, which is led by the chief of protocol, uh, has no record whatsoever that there's a request for us to provide protocol services uh, to His Excellency Ruto. I was not informed by, I, by the chief of protocol. He's not on, on his records that a request for him, him to be given protocol service in Uganda was, was requested by the Kenyan High Commission. So as far as we, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, no, no record was ever that, that uh, His Excellency Ruto was coming to Uganda and required our assistance as the government of Uganda. Regarding the alleged arrest of Uganda and Turkey, best blogger Fred Kajubi, alias Lumbuye, Minister Oriem replied but with constraints since he wasn't in possession of evidence to confirm his arrest. Well, I don't know if he has been arrested. I heard that he's been arrested. And if he's arrested because of a crime he committed, then he deserves to be arrested because he committed a crime. Anybody who commits a crime in any country whatsoever should will pay the, uh, the price for committing or breaking the law, including in Uganda. That person they're talking to is not, is not a special person. Who is he to think that he can get to be above the law in respect to where he is? In any case, if Lumbuye is arrested, international laws calls for his repatriation back home and the Directorate of Public Prosecution will prefer charges against him. Robert Onyango, UBC News.